Hello and welcome. Uh, this is not the normal way in which we choose to do our open evenings and open days, but we are in unusual times, so we need to be creative uh, and we need to be resilient in, in the way that we try and do things. So, welcome to the Greater Peterborough University Technical College. Uh, the purpose of this is, uh, is twofold, really. It's for parents who have missed the opportunity to come in and take part in one of our normal open evenings or open days. And however, it is also an opportunity for us to do something like this, put it on our website, so that for, for future parents, prospective parents, people that are interested in finding out a bit more about the UTC, um, this is a great way of you, uh, of you getting a little bit of insight as to, to what the UTC is about, um, what we stand for as an organisation, if you were interested in sending your child here. So uh, the slides that I'm going to go through behind me and, and the things that I'm going to be talking about is typically the, the principles welcome um, that I would normally go through at an open evening or an open day. So you know, everything you're hearing is what I would be saying to the parents if you were to turn up to a, to a normal open evening. Um, I do sometimes go a bit off tangent, so I apologise uh, sometimes. Uh, no, no two conversations, no two speeches are always necessarily the same. So first of all, thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for watching this. Um, my name is David Bisley. I'm the principal here. I've been the principal here now for coming up to two years. Before that, I was the vice principal here. So I have been here uh, since the school opened. Um, I joined slightly before the school opened its doors to students to help the previous principal set the organisation up uh, and, and start the GPUTC on its journey. Um, I took over as principal two years into its inception and like I said, I'm coming up now to, to two years in charge as, as head teacher here. So one of the first questions that people always ask me when I first got the job here um, typically was, so, so what is the UTC? You know, I've never heard of the UTC. Um, what is it? Where is it? And, and, and what sort of students are you catering for? Um, so I myself was educated in Peterborough. I did my GCSEs at Ken Stimson Community School um, and I then went to Arthur Mellows to do my A-levels. So I know a lot about Peterborough. I know a lot about the, the schools in Peterborough. I know a lot about the, the, the history and the legacy of education in this fantastic city. So first and foremost, I was delighted to be able to come back having spent all of my teaching career um, up in Yorkshire. So I, I left Peterborough to go to university in Yorkshire and, and 18 years later, the UTC encouraged me and, and tempted me back to Peterborough. So, um, again, when I first came back, family and friends saying, you know, I've never heard of this school, you know, what is it about? Um, so I just really want to start by saying, you know, a couple of points on, on what we are uh, and then also sort of what we're not. Um, sort of going over some of the misconceptions because, you know, the technical colleges um, from, a, from a years before had a particular stigma attached to them and it's about how we can uh, how we can establish what the UTC is and, and how it fits into Peterborough's educational landscape. So first and foremost, we are a 13 to 19 educational provider. So our students start with us at year nine and hopefully they stay with us right through sixth form to the end of year 13. Uh, they do get a chance at the end of year 11 uh, to leave and to go to college or to go to other sixth form providers or to go on to apprenticeships. Um, but obviously, you know, we want most of our students to stay here for the entirety of the five years. Students can join us at year 10. So although the majority of our students join us at year nine, there is also an opportunity for students to join us at the start of year 10 as well, albeit a much smaller group of students that that window is opportunity, that opportunity is there for. Um, and we are a STEM school. We are Peterborough's only STEM specialist school. So STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths. So if you are interested in those subjects, then the UTC has to be something that you consider. So these are subjects that, that we study in great detail. They are subjects that we study at GCSE, uh, A-level and other level two and three qualification standards. But they're also subjects that our sponsors are particularly passionate about. Um, also added to that, you know, the design and the built environment. So the school also is supported by a very strong design team and the built environment is students route into architecture, uh, civil engineering uh, and lots of those 
more creative areas. So, so these are our core specialisms. So if you're interested in those subjects, you're interested in, in us. Um, maths is crucial to all of those. You know, all of those subjects, all of those career paths that we've talked about, you know, have, have a real fundamental underlying um, maths base there. So that has to be something that you're in. It doesn't have to be your favourite subject, but it certainly has to be one that you are, you are interested in. Um, and, and what you will see when I talk through the way in which our curriculum is structured, we, we put a lot of value on project-based learning. So it's, yes, there is classroom learning, but lots of our learning is, is in workshops, it's in design studios, and it's around this concept of project-based learning. So you know, the, the skills of problem solving, creativity, logical thinking are really crucial to UTC students. Um, and I've already briefly mentioned our sponsors and I will talk about them uh, in, in a bit more detail later. But, but everything we do is underpinned and supported by a core team of sponsors. We have a, have a real strong team of primary sponsors that are involved in the school almost on a weekly basis. But we also have a much wider network of contacts that we use time and time again. Um, and, and one of the things we're really proud of here and something that really shines through uh, in our teaching and learning is how we connect everything we do in school to real life situations and real life scenarios. You know, we, we are not learning for the sake of learning here. We're certainly not learning um, because an exam specification tells us we need to learn this. We, part of our learning cycle is we try and connect learning to the real world and to real life situations. Um, and, and again, one of, our, one of our underlying values is, is around how we, we dress professional, we think professional, we act professional. You know, we don't have a typical school uniform. We expect our students to dress smart, dress professional, and the way that they conduct themselves around the organisation um, matches and mirrors that. Uh, and in the school's Ofsted report, when we got a good for personal development, behaviour and welfare, you know, the, the behaviour of the students was time and time again highlighted as being outstanding, exemplary, you know, very, very good. It is a real strength of the organisation that the calm, purposeful and mature way that our students behave. Um, what we're not, uh, we're not a vocational school. Um, everything we offer is at least level two or level three when it comes to key stage three. Um, Peterborough College offer a fantastic range of vocational entry level and level one qualifications. Um, so that is a much more appropriate base if you are looking at, at that type of uh, offer. Um, we're not an alternative mainstream provider. We're not a PRU. We're certainly not a school for, for, for naughty children. Um, going right back to bullet point one, you know, if you've not got a passion in science, engineering uh, and maths, then this really isn't uh, an organisation, really isn't a school that you are going to, to flourish in. Um, and we're certainly not a short term or a part time provision. We don't have uh, half days. We don't have part time timetables. You know, the school day finishes at nearly four o'clock. Enrichment goes on till nearly five o'clock. So uh, we are trying as close as possible to match the, uh, the, the typical nine to five working day to get students used to that way of working. Um, you know, so, so again, one of the questions as a principal I'm often asked now is, so why should I consider sending my child to your school? Or, or from, a, from a child's perspective, why should I leave my school um, and, and come to yours? So uh, the first thing that's really important to know is when we look at last year's results, uh, UTCs are measured in a slightly different way. Uh, we are not bound by the same curriculum restraints that other schools are. So we don't have to do some of the subjects that students would need to do in other schools. Uh, instead, we are able to be a bit more creative in the subjects that we offer. Um, so again, I'll talk more about the curriculum offer at a later point, but um, it's, it's, it's useful to know a bit more about our, our outcomes and our destination data. So we're talking about the 2019 results at the moment because obviously 2020, we haven't got those results yet. Uh, Peabra UTC was the second most UT, improved UTC in the entire country. There are 50 UTCs in the country. Uh, and our results last year were the second most improved in the entire country. Uh, we were the most improved school in, in Peterborough. So when we're looking at our 2018 results, um, myself coming in as, as, as head teacher, uh, at the end of those results, uh, the 2019 results were the most improved in the, in the whole of Peterborough. Uh, we expect that trajectory to continue this year. We expect our results to be even better this year. Uh, and looking at our current year 10s, we really expect those results to be uh, sky high the year after next as well. Uh, in terms of our maths results, we talk time and time again about maths. 
the third best match results in the whole of Peterborough. Uh, again, I expect those results to be really, really strong this year. Uh, and the following year, I'm expecting those results to be pushing for, for the top two spots in Peterborough. And again, if you know anything about Peterborough, you'll know that historically there have always been one or two schools that have been the, the standout schools in terms of academic performance. I'm, I'm really keen for us to push to, to try and uh, to break into that top two as an organisation. Um, so when you combine those, those results with the English results, we know that it doesn't matter what other qualifications you get in secondary education, English and maths open so many doors. It's so important that students get a pass in English and maths because without those grades, qualifications, apprenticeships, jobs, career paths, those doors are shut. So, you know, for us to go from being one of the worst schools in Peterborough in 2018 to be the fourth best uh, at the end of my first year in charge was an outstanding achievement. Like I've said, we fully expect to maintain that position this year and to improve on that again next year. So real progress being made in a short space of time at the UTC. Um, over 20%, so one out of every five students got a grade seven or better in maths. That is the equivalent of an A grade in, in old language. Uh, the average grade in GCSE physics was a grade six. So again, in old language, that's a grade B. That's the average grade that our students are getting in our science and our maths qualifications. And from 2018 to 2019, the average grade across all of our subjects went up by a whole grade. So the average grade a student is now getting at the Peter UTC is a strong pass. Um, in terms of year 13, the sixth form, um, our average technical qualification, engineering, built environment, design, has gone up from a merit plus to a distinction minus. So obviously a distinction is the highest grade you can get. So we're sat at a distinction minus. So we are just on the cusp of our average grade being the highest possible grade a student can get. Every single student that sat that qualification passed that qualification. We have a 100% pass rate. So if you come here to study a technical qualification, you are guaranteed to pass that qualification. And our average grade, is a distinction minus. So our six formers are, are batting at a particularly high average. Uh, likewise with our GCSEs, our average A-level grade from 2018 to 2019 has gone up by an entire grade. We are predicting for that to go up again by an entire grade with the 2020 um, academic results for our, for our A-levels. So again, a real, real strong upward trajectory there. Um, and when we look at some of our other specialisms that aren't technical, so product design, which is a subject that we push in Key Stage 4, right through to Key Stage 5, again, 90% of our students are, are achieving their target grade, um, and 60%, so 6 out of every 10 students, are actually beating their target grade. So again, a real strength there in our, in our product design area. Um, looking at our, our current year 12, so our what was our year 12s moving into our year 13s now these guys are 75 percent so three quarters of our year group again at least getting a distinction really hopeful we can get that distinction minus up to a to a flat distinction and who knows in future years maybe we can push it up to a distinction star what an amazing achievement that would be for us and, and when we look at our students that didn't quite pass maths um, at GCSE, so we have a number of students joining us from other organisations that maybe only got a three or a four, and we allow them to, to resit that with us. Compared to 22% nationally, 73% of those students, so nearly three quarters of the students that didn't pass GCSE maths in year 11, but get the chance to resit it with us, and are finding themselves passing that, that, that uh, qualification. And that's three times the national uh, pass rate. So again, a real strength in our sixth form there. When we look at our vision, there are, there are four key parts to our vision. Apologies if you, if you can't read it from the screen, but first and foremost, we, we work together to make sure we have high quality teaching and learning. That They have to come hand in hand. You can't have high quality teaching if you've not got high quality learners, and you can't have high quality learners if you've not, great, not got great teachers. So we work really, really hard here to make sure that teaching is as good as it absolutely can be, but we also put just as much emphasis on making sure that the young people here understand what it means to be a good learner. All of the skills that come with being a, an effective learner. Um, something that is, is, is that shines through at the UTC is the positive relationships we have 
them, both with each other, with students and with parents. This, is, this really is one of the cornerstones of what makes this such a, such a fantastic organisation to lead, such a fantastic organisation to work at and such a lovely school to, to come and study at. There's such a positive relationship here, such a wonderful atmosphere. You know, part of our professional standards is, is that you know, we don't raise our voice, we don't shout, we don't have confrontation. We deal with these things in a, in a corporate professional manner. Again, getting young people ready for that world of work and getting ready for, for adulthood. Um, obviously, STEM subjects is at the heart of everything we do not just in terms of our curriculum, but our enrichment offer, uh, the building in itself, the, the way in which we operate as an organisation, those STEM subjects, uh, again, are, are, are crucial and at the heart of everything we do. Uh, and finally, talking about, you know, we talk about excellence and we strive for that excellence. You know, if something's good, how can we make it better? How can we make something great? No engineer, no architect ever did prototype or design one and just went, that's good enough. You know, how do we evolve projects? How do we plan? How do we replan? How do we reschedule, redraft? How do we make things as good as they possibly can? And we apply that to all walks. You know, if your attendance is 95%, that's fantastic. How can we make it better? If you've got 80% in a test, brilliant. How do we get 85%? How do we get 90%? So everything we do, we look to see how we can make it as good as it possibly can be. Um, in terms of our values, hopefully you've picked up on our values at the top and tail of each slide. But, you know, respect, responsibility and readiness. Um, that everything we do is underpinned by those values. That, that mutual respect, um, showing that courtesy, showing that respect for everybody, to yourself, to the organisation. Um, you know, respect is given. Re respect is given without question in this organisation. Um, in terms of readiness, it's all around how we get people prepared and ready for the working day, how we get them ready for life beyond school, how we embed the right attitude and the right skills within our students. Uh, and with regards to responsibility, it's about taking that accountability, taking that personal accountability, that personal responsibility for our actions, for our future uh, and for ourselves. So really crucial and really important to us here at the UTC. Um, so I mentioned our sponsors uh, earlier briefly, but in a bit more detail now, um, so our sponsors have, have weekly involvement in the UTC life. They represent um, their, themselves on governing bodies. So the majority of my governors are representatives from, the, uh, from our various sponsors. Um, they set work. You know, I'll talk a bit about the projects uh, in a short while, but the, the sponsors set these projects, they mark these projects, they support, they evaluate these projects, um, and they're real projects. You know, what, what's, what's really important is these aren't just textbook projects, they're not things that have come off the internet. These are actual problems, actual situations and projects that our sponsors are currently doing with their engineers, with their architects, designers, scientists, um, and our students are getting a chance to, to have a crack at these projects. Uh, and in some cases, you know, the, the ideas that our students are coming up with are being adopted by our sponsors because these ideas are just as good, if not better, than some of the ideas that their own colleagues and own staff are coming up with. Um, so uh, as part of the UTC, the opportunity to have work-related learning and work experience is fundamental to everything we do. And clearly our sponsors play a really strong part in that element of the organisation. So lots of our students will get the chance to, uh, to do work experience with our sponsors. Every single student will get the chance to visit a number of our sponsors for work-related learning opportunities, field trips, days out. Um, typically within the first week of joining the UTC, every single adult and child in this building will go out and visit one of our sponsors so they get a feel for what it's like in the real working world. Uh, and finally, and really usefully, is they're able to provide professional mentoring. So once a child is getting to an age where they are considering their options, be that post-16 or post-18, our sponsors are able to, to send people in to talk, advise, mentor and give a, a, advice and guidance to our students. So we have a fantastic careers advisor here, um, but who better to give you advice on a particular sponsor or a particular employee than someone that's already working for them. Uh, and, and where it works even better is where it is our ex-students who are now working for these sponsors who are able to come back and talk about their own personal experiences and their own journey and advise our students on what's best for them. Um, so looking at our curriculum offer, if you choose to join us in year nine um, or year 10, so year nine, all students do English, maths and science. That's absolutely crucial and it underpins everything. 
what is really exciting about our year nine is something that we call project six so rather than studying your typical lessons like you would in a typical school uh, project six is you will be in a small group and you will have six periods a week for six weeks on a particular project so over a day a week dedicated just to your project six uh, and this will be where a sponsor comes in in conjunction with one or two departments um, and sets you a project and you have got 36 lessons so 36 hours to to design that project to make that project and then evaluate that project and at the end of those six weeks you will be evaluated by the sponsors. They'll come back in and now they'll, they'll, they'll look and evaluate the work you've done. And at that point, a different sponsor will set you a different challenge. So over the course of the year, you will undertake six unique challenges. Now, bear in mind within your group, there may be three or four teams competing against each other and there will be two other groups also doing this. So there may be as many as 15 to 20 teams undertaking each of these projects and at the end of the year we will put on a huge project six uh, celebration evening where sponsors will come in and give out prizes to the best teams and there'll be a really fantastic celebration opportunity to look at all of the work we've done now running alongside that is something called an hpq so a, a higher project qualification this is worth half a gcse so this is where you will get the opportunity to take all of the skills you've learned from project six and apply it to one project that will run throughout the entire year. So this will be a unique project to you as a student. And at the end of the year, this is worth half a GCSE. So you will be finishing year nine already with half a GCSE. In addition, in year nine, you have an hour of PE and you'll have an hour of PHSE. So personal health, social education. Moving into year 10, obviously we'll continue with English, maths and science. We do language and literature uh, and for science the majority of our students will be studying triple science so just from english maths and science there are six gcse's that you will be getting there you will then choose from one of our specialisms be that engineering built environment architecture or product design you will then also get the opportunity to choose one of our gcse options from art geography business studies um, or computer science um, again, you will still get an hour of PE, you'll still get an hour of PHSE. So that's what that will look like for year 10 and through year 11. You will do your work experience um, about halfway through year 10. Normally it's around Easter time at year 10. You, uh, you'll get a few weeks where you can do your, your work experience. So moving into our sixth form, um, all students must study at least three of the following qualifications. So there's a whole list there. These can be found on our website, in our prospectus. Um, or just by ringing up the school. So a whole list of A-levels, a whole list of BTECs and other level three qualifications. There's a few there that which count as a double award. So you can do a double award in engineering. There's also potentially gonna be a double award uh, for the BTEC applied science. So if you have a particular passion for engineering or science, there's a possibility to double up in those subjects. Uh, lots of other A-levels there to, to complement them. All of the A-levels we offer at Sixth Form are, are options at which you would have covered through Project 6 and through your GCSE studies. Uh, and then for, for other students, but sorry, for all students, is the opportunity to do enrichment. Enrichment happens uh, for one hour at the end of every single day. So a huge, huge, wide array of enrichment opportunities. The list that's up on the board now, if you get a chance to see it, again, it's on the website, um, it's in the prospectus. That was this year's offer. Changes slightly every year because as our staffing changes, different people can offer different options, but there's a few there that are uh, that, that are mainstays. There's a few there: the Vex, the Green Power Cars, the Sea Cadets, the Duke of uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award, the Baker Technical Award. They're the ones that are in all the time. The Field Gun Challenges, plus many, many more that get added every year. This is also where there's other opportunities to take part in sports teams, go to the gym, and do things that are a bit more physical and a bit more active for students that enjoy that. But there's also a chance to do things like history club, debating club. Um, we're even talking about possibly a newspaper or a radio station as well. So lots of opportunities to, to go down uh, slightly different routes for our, for our students as well. Uh, and then finally, um, from myself, is there, you know, there, there's a huge team of people here, a huge team of teachers, support staff, teaching assistants that are, that are always keen to talk to people, always keen to help. But some of the key people that you, uh, that you may come across 
And so Steve Colby is my vice principal. Steve heads up the, the engineering and the specialisms. He also does a lot of the you know, logistical stuff around the organisation in terms of making sure that the building is, is safe, is open uh, and is operating correctly. Uh, Becky McKinnon is my director of learning. So anything to do with teaching and learning, Becky takes a lead on. She also has an overview uh, of the science department and the computer science departments. Lynn Donaldson is my director of student support. She's my SENCO, she's my safeguarding lead. She looks after the English department, the geography department, but also looks after the, the welfare team, the attendance team, the behavior team, so that the student managers who are our version of heads of years and also the learning support team. And then Laura Collins, who is my director of progress. So very much looking at, at the curriculum, um, at the exams, at, at the qualifications we offer at coursework. And Laura oversees uh, the maths department um, and, and, and the art department and a few other subjects as well. So that's my, that's my core team. Uh, you'll also maybe come in contact with, with Beth Malcolmson, who is my marketing lead. Beth is a lady who has a lot of the communication with people that um, are applying for places here. So they're, they're the crucial people for you to know. Um, can, can I just finish by saying a huge, huge thank you for, for sticking with me, if you're still there. Um, like I say, this, this isn't how we normally do our, our open evenings. This isn't how we normally try and communicate, but these, uh, these interesting times do call for, for interesting and creative measures. So uh, thank you again for, for sticking with me. Thank you again for watching. Um, we do have uh, an email address. Uh, there, are, there are two that you can use. The first one is info at gputc.com, which goes to our, our, our admin team and Beth Malcolmson can pick that up. And there's also an slt at gputc.com and that goes to myself and my entire senior team. So there's two email addresses there that which you can use uh, and these are monitored and, and staffed on a daily basis. So if you do have any questions, use those email addresses. We're more than happy to pick up the phone uh, and have a conversation with you. Uh, we're more than happy to, to use Microsoft Teams or Zoom to have a have a face to face chat as well. So uh, take care, stay safe, and I look forward to uh, to meeting lots of you soon uh, and speaking to you soon. Thank you very much. Greater Peterborough University Technical College comes equipped with four industry standard state-of-the-art workshops. Each workshop is tailor designed for the four specialisms the UTC offers. Engineering design, engineering manufacture, the built environment and product design. Each workshop at the Petri UTC is kitted out to cater for a maximum of 20 students per class. This means all students are able to access high quality engagement from our skilled technical teaching team. The UTC is also fortunate to house four design studios, each one aligned to a engineering workshop, enabling the technical design to happen alongside the practical manufacture of goods. And last, but by no means least, the UTC has a vast array of light, airy, spacious learning spaces where typical classroom learning can take place.